warming up the winter with patterns. Today we can discover what a still life is and how to create one. We will learn how artists use patterns in their art. So we can create a still life of a hot cocoa mug using lots of patterns. But first, we need to find out what a still life is. A still life is a type of art using still objects from around everyday life and your house. Think about all the kinds of objects you find sitting around in your home that you could pick up and put on a table. Artists will do this and try to draw and paint, photograph, or even sculpt them. Still lifes are a really great way to practice drawing new things. Here are lots of examples of still life paintings. You can tell how they all have similarities and differences. Take a look and see if you can find some similarities. I see how artists like to use food. Wow, artists really must love food. I also see how artists use lots of color to help describe their still lifes. I wonder what you can add in yours. Here's a famous artist, Romero Brito. He is from Brazil. He loves to create using lots of patterns. He created many still life paintings with bright colors, bold lines, and patterns using objects from around his house. Warm cocoa mug with patterns. Success today equals drawing a large hot cocoa mug sitting on a table with all the parts of your picture filled with bright colors, bold lines, and patterns, leaving very little white space. In this video, I will show you several different steps on how to draw the hot cocoa mug. At any time, you can pause while you're trying to catch up or rewind and play a part over again. Let's see how to get started. I'm drawing our hot, yummy cup of cocoa for our still life today. I have a mug here with me, and what I want to talk to you about really quick is the shape of the mug. A coffee mug is actually in the shape of a cylinder. So if you remember those 3D forms like cubes and cones and rectangular prisms and cylinders, a coffee mug is a cylinder. So that's partly what we're going to be starting with today is learning how to draw the shape of a cylinder making it look like we can see the inside of the cup and also drawing the handle which is a curved shape on the side of the cup. So this is my cool little coffee mug. I'm going to sit in front of me while I draw. You could also get a coffee mug and have it sitting in front of you for your still life while you draw too. You're also going to need a plain white sheet of paper just like usual and some type of a pencil, a marker, or a black crayon for outlining, and then we'll use crayons and markers later for coloring. So in order to start this shape of the coffee mug, the cylinder, we're gonna begin by drawing the top of the cylinder, which is like a long skinny oval, and then we're gonna draw two lines straight down and a curved line at the bottom for the bottom of the coffee mug. So taking my pencil, I'm going to go up to right about the middle of my paper and I am going to draw a long skinny oval by going around and around and around several times. The easiest way to do this is by not pushing hard on your paper. That is by far the easiest way to make a long skinny oval like that. Kind of looks like a baguette that you would get at Great Harvest Bread Company or something. And then once you get that shape down pretty good and you feel pretty happy with it, you can draw the sides of the mug. Now if you feel like this shape is really tricky for you, you could have someone help you with that part or you could try another way to draw it is by drawing like a forward facing C shape and a backward facing C shape and then connecting the two. 
that is also another way to do it. But it's okay if yours does not look like mine because all of us have artwork that is made a little bit differently. All right, once you're done drawing that oval shape, we're gonna draw two lines straight down and we want the lines to be long enough so that our coffee mug looks big enough to drink out of, sort of like a real life size coffee mug. So my drawing is gonna look about the same size as my actual coffee mug. And I want my lines to be parallel to each other about the same length. You should be able to fit your whole hand right there in the length of your coffee mug. Once you get those lines about the same length, now you're gonna draw a curved line at the bottom. Now I'm doing mine really lightly so that if I make a mistake, I can erase part of it, just like that, and go back and fix it. So it will look like this when it's finished. And then, for drawing the handle, you can use a C shape, a backwards facing C. You could use half of a circle. You could use a U shape. I like to draw my handles doing half of a heart shape, like this. Now that is the inside shape of the handle. Then I need to make another line, the same shape around that line to make the outside shape of the handle, just like that. And when you have all of that drawn in, then you're gonna take your black marker or your black crayon and you're gonna do your best to trace it with the nice, big, bold lines, just like the examples that we looked at. Same thing with your lines down the side, your line around the bottom, and your handle. Now one of the things I love to do after I trace everything with a black marker is I like to take my pencil and go back and erase any pencil lines that I don't need. That just helps me clean up my artwork a little bit so it looks a little neater. Now we need to draw the table. And the easiest way to show a table with this type of a still life is just to draw a line on one side of the coffee mug, about halfway through the coffee mug, coming out the other side in the same place. You want the line to go straight through without going through the middle of the coffee mug. So I'm gonna draw that a little bit darker, start here, go out that side. So now what it does is it shows you where the wall is and where the table is. So then we can begin to design our really cool patterns. So this is the end of step one. Okay, so step two, after you get your mug drawn and outlined just the way you like it, we're gonna talk about how to add some detail. Now, one of the things people love to put in their hot cocoa is, of course, um, marshmallows. Marshmallows are the shape of a cylinder. So I'm gonna show you here, drawing a marshmallow is a lot like drawing a tiny coffee mug because we're gonna be putting small ones in our hot cocoa. So if you want to do that, you can put a few small marshmallows floating in your hot cocoa. I'm gonna put maybe three or four or five in mine. And it'll look like hot cocoa when we color it. Right now, it's not going to look like hot cocoa because we haven't added any color yet. So right now, it kind of just looks like the marshmallows are floating there. And then I wanna actually put a couple on my table like they have fallen out or I'm gonna snack on them later. So I have them sitting on the table next to my hot cocoa mug. You can also add other details too. Like if you wanna add a candy cane kind of coming out of your hot cocoa mug. I know some people like putting peppermint sticks or a candy cane inside your hot cocoa. You could put the end of a spoon coming out I know a lot of times when I drink hot cocoa, I have a spoon in there that I stir it around. You can add that too. 
and then start thinking about how are you going to design all of this space. We've been talking a lot about patterns and how bright patterns can really make anything look much more magical. So just like we've learned before how to make all of these big, bold, bright patterns, that's what we're going to be doing to all of our background and our table. On the front of your coffee mug, if you want to design it like something Christmassy, you could draw your favorite Christmas character if you celebrate Christmas. You could draw a Christmas tree if you wanted to. Then the last step that we're going to do after we add our details is we're going to add color. So that will be step three. Okay, your final step is going to be to start working on your patterns. Now you might notice that I went ahead and outlined with my black marker all of my details first and then I'm taking my pencil and I'm really lightly kind of just drawing what I want my pattern to look like. I decided that since I love polka dots so much I want to do some big polka dots on my wall and then down here on my uh, table I am going to do a checkerboard pattern with red and black because I love red and black checkerboard patterns. So while I'm doing this, you can start your drawing and you can watch me draw. Before you finish your wonderful hot mug of cocoa still life, I want to make sure that you don't forget to color that cocoa nice chocolatey brown in the center of your cup. And then even if you want, you can add the steam rising up. And I made steam in mine by using a black marker and I colored it in gray just to give it that extra effect of looking like a real still life drawing. Notice how I colored most of my paper in and I have almost no white spaces. I would love to see you do that too. So you can hang this up somewhere in your house and be really proud of your warm winter still life, your hot mug of yummy cocoa. Have fun drawing. See you later. Bye-bye.